Hello, and welcome back to Kestis Forest. Now, when it comes to modern consoles, I've always been more of a PlayStation guy than an Xbox guy. I do own an original Xbox and an Xbox 360, but I bought them both after Xbox had moved on to the next generation. I really just bought them when they were cheaper so I could go back and pick up some of the exclusive games I missed out on when I was playing the PlayStation. So it stands to reason now that we're about two to three years into the new generation, I should go back and have a look at the Xbox One. Now, disappointingly, there isn't really a lot on the Xbox One that I can really look at and call an exclusive these days that I can't get on a Switch or a PlayStation. But there is one game, and that will be the Rare Replay Collection, which I got from CEX for about five pounds. Now, I am a really big fan of Rare, so I was really looking forward to picking up this collection and giving it a go, but I wasn't prepared to pay one or 200 pounds to do so. But scrolling through eBay these days, I actually noticed that you can buy spares or repairs Xbox One S's, which is a nice small compact console for around about 40 to 50 pounds. And I actually managed to do so for around about 40 pounds. It included a controller and those themselves go for around that price if you go to eBay or CEX. So I thought it really was worth a try. Now, I knew this might be testing my skills somewhat, but I also happen to know, having watched a few YouTube videos, that there are a few known faults and things to try on this, and I thought it really was worth a gamble. So, with no further ado, let's take a look. Okay, so here we go, and as you can see, it's as described, it's beeping, powering on, and then immediately turning itself off. And I've tried everything here, I've tried all the different types of resets I can find online and nothing's happening. So I think it's time to take it apart and have a look inside. Now getting into it isn't that tricky but you do need to remove this bottom panel which can be a bit of a pain because you can easily break the tab so just patience and it will come free. And then you're met with all these torque screws of different sizes uh, which you need to then remove to get to the main unit itself. And a bit of dust by the fan, but not too bad actually, that's really, that's really fine. And after we remove the top panel then, we've got the hard drive here. This was a 500 gig hard drive that came with this particular model, and then the DVD drive or the HDVD drive, the power supply and I'm just checking the power supply first to make sure that it's working and as you can see here we're getting 12 volts on all three of the different outputs so it doesn't look like the power supply is to blame. Now from what I've read there are a few other places to check on the motherboard for where the issues might lie and in order to extract the board from the casing I need to remove the Wi-Fi card and this front panel here and now we have the board out we can see it's a bit dusty where the fan is and there's a certain amount of white residue that's a bit suspicious but I'm going to remove the X clamp here so that I can finally take off the heatsink as well and be left with just the board there it is and then we can actually give this a bit of a clean and yeah looking at this this is where the power rails kind of feed into the board and you can see that this is looking pretty grim so I'm just going to get myself some isopropyl alcohol, cheers, and then I'm going to give it a bit of a scrub and we can see where we are. What I'm checking here are these MOSFETs on the power rails. They need to be reading uh, in diode mode around about sort of 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts at the gates, and they, and they are. Now, unfortunately, it's really not looking good for this Xbox. I've tried all the things that I thought I might be able to test for based on what I've read up on the internet. So I've, I've checked the power supply, I've checked the rails, and I've checked the MOSFETs down where the power supply would be, and everything appears to be as expected. So really what I need to start doing now is start investigating the rest of the board. But, you know, having gone through it and cleaned it up, actually, I can't see anything obvious. And without a second Xbox to compare it to, I'm really not going to be able to find out if anything isn't behaving as it should. So I bought another one. 
and I managed to get it for around about the same price. I had an offer accepted of £35 plus shipping and I'm hoping that I can use this to fix the first one or use the first one to fix this. And a quick look at the outside, it's a bit dirtier than the other one and it's obviously had a bang which maybe isn't good news but the void sticker seems okay so hopefully no one's been inside. The listing said again that it was powering on and then immediately off again so let's turn our attention to the power rail and see what we can find. Taking a look next to the GPU under where the fan was, it's a bit dirty but over here, yes, this looks bad. This looks like a component has actually blown. Uh, so I think what we need to do is turn our attention here and maybe remove some of these components and replace them with bits from my first Xbox. And checking the gates here, I can see that the first two look okay. These two look, yeah, around about the right mark. That's surprising, that's working, but look at this not surprising at all this doesn't work at all we're getting nothing off of this so yeah this looks like it's completely blown now so as not to take any chances i'm going to replace all of the dodgy looking components here with ones from my cleaner looking xbox but unfortunately because my garage is so cold and because there's so much burned on damage here removing these is not as easy as i'd like in fact it's very difficult indeed and I was at this for quite some time. Now I cleaned the area several times in the process and I also added in a lot of leaded solder here as well to try and just get a little bit more heat here and try and get these components to remove a little bit easier but you know it really was a long process and I had to be very patient and the MOSFET that actually blew here as you can see in the end I just had to pull it off and I ripped a few pads with it which is not really what I wanted to do. The rest though, these capacitors, um, did seem to come off okay so after a while I eventually got the area clear. And what you're seeing now is me wicking away all the extra leaded solder that I've added and then giving it another scrub. And it's not as bad as I thought. Uh, there's a torn pad and quite a bit of the masking has come free. So there's some exposed copper, but I think we can work with it. So the next thing for me to do is then remove the good components from this other board. And unfortunately, it's the same story, not quite as bad but really they were putting up quite a fight. And I think at this point, it really is just down to the temperature of my garage because this board has a huge ground plane. So it's, it's really absorbing all the heat immediately. And because it's so cold in the first place, I'm really struggling to get the heat to stay where it is. And while I've made a bit of progress here, I am now at risk of damaging some of these larger components. So what I'm doing here is just applying a general amount of heat to the area and the board with my larger heat gun. And hopefully then it will make the task of removing these smaller components a little easier. Now I think I'd pretty much damaged the first MOSFET I was trying to remove uh, just by sort of trying too hard to pull it away. So I moved up the rail and pulled a few from this part here because it doesn't really matter where I get them from, they're both the same. And here you can see what I'm left with, these tiny, tiny components. After applying a good amount of flux, I placed the components in place and added some heat to try and get them to stick back down to the board. I'm not feeling very confident at this point because although I can't see any actual issues it's just really not looking very pretty and I'm expecting bridges etc but here's the final result and it's it's looking okay I mean it's not amazing looking but I did check it with the multimeter and everything seems to be connecting in the way it should 
and then checking the MOSFET gates. Here you can see that I'm actually getting almost 0.7 on every single one, including the ones that I replaced down here, which feels like something of a miracle, but my confidence is suddenly slightly higher. Now, because I've removed this heatsink, I'm going to have to replace the thermal paste. And as you can see, it's pretty old and dry and crusty now, so probably could have done with it anyway. So scraping it off with a razor blade and giving it a nice clean down before applying a nice solid blob in the middle. This MX4 thermal compound is what I've used in, on computers and things in the past, so I'm pretty confident it'll do the job. So putting it partially back together and hitting power, what happens? Yes, the fan comes on and it stays on, which is more than it was doing before. So I plug it back into the TV with an HDMI cable and boom, we're working. I can't believe it. It actually worked. So I plugged the CD drive back in while I was about to put it all back together and look, there was actually a disc inside. GTA 5, um, but I'm flipping it over, it's not in the best condition, so I'm not entirely sure I'm going to actually be able to play that. One final check. Oh. Why are you not? Now, in true Kester's Forest style, I got it working, got very excited, put it back together, plugged it back in, and nothing. Completely dead. But more dead than it was before. I mean, nothing. When I turned the power on before, it was beeping and then powering off pretty quickly. This time, absolutely nothing. So, I took it apart again and had another look. Now what I'm doing here is going back to the drawing board and tracing my steps. So the power supply is working, it's 12 volts, I plug it into the board and then I follow the power from there. So here is where it actually meets the board. This side is, I think, the ground plane. So I'm going to check and we should get 12 volts here next. And we don't. So already the power's not making it into the board, but we know that it's coming from the supply. So what could be causing the issue? Well, if you look here, you'll see that the actual connector seems to have pulled away from the board, possibly from me plugging it and unplugging it over and over again. So I wedged it between two soft pieces of pine in a vise and just slowly closed it and pinched it back onto the board, hopefully make a new connection. As you can see, it's now sitting flush with the board. So I plug it back in and have another test. Aha! 12 volts. 12 volts. And 12 volts. Okay, we're back in business. Let's try again. Now this time I have the hard drive plugged in. The fan... Oh yes, here we go. The fan's working. Yay! We have liftoff. Finally. Okay. Let's get this back together again. Now, as an added bonus, this second Xbox One S that I got had a one terabyte hard drive instead of the 500 gigabytes, which was really nice. And I'm being extra careful putting this back together now, just so as not to make any more silly mistakes. There really are a lot of screws 
and uh, just pushing this down gently on the bottom again just giving it a bit of a clean and a wipe down and hoping that this time I haven't ruined it. And of course, to play some games, we're going to need a controller. Now, the first one came with this controller, but I've not had a chance to really test it yet. So I'm syncing it, which worked, and updating it. And then I'm going to run it through some diagnostics to make sure that all the buttons are working as expected. And racing through them here, they all seem to be working except for LB, which I cannot get to stay on. It's, it's sort of flashing on and on really quickly. And yeah, it's a bit sticky. So this controller clearly needs a clean anyway. So I'm gonna take it apart, give it a clean and see if I can't get that one button to work as expected. Well used is how I would describe this. Just a controller booger, nothing to see here. So I'm going to spray some contact cleaner into these little switches here. This is LB, the one that's given me all the problems, but I'm going to uh, I'm going to spray the other one as well, just for good measure. And I think just due to their location, these are probably a bit more prone to getting dust and dirt in them. They seem quite exposed. And then I'm just going to scrub the rest of it. A bit of uh, IPA on the thumbsticks there, coming out quite nice. And then the shell. Just going to put it in some hot soapy water, give it a nice scrub, and then put it back together. Looks good as new, lovely. And giving it another test now, LB is working just as it should. So let's play some games. First up, Transformers Devastation. I had this already, I have two games for the Xbox One and this was the other one. And I love Transformers, so I thought I'd give this one a go, just to test the drive out, make sure everything's working, and it's working great! And so far, all the buttons on the controller seem to be working well too. Now as I say, I'm a huge fan of Rare, but this is my favourite game, Blast Chords on the N64. There really is nothing more enjoyable than driving into things and making them explode. So if you like that kind of thing, this is the game for you. But what about backwards compatibility? Let's try a 360 game here. We got Gears of War 2, which is 
you know, a game I've actually played and it's got shooting and jumping over things and throwing grenades and everything in glorious black and white. So we're working there. And of course on the Xbox we've got Crimson Skies, which is an absolutely fantastic game if you haven't played it. It's dogfighting, not quite sure propellers on the back of the plane are going to work. But yeah, you get to fight and blow things up. It's really good fun. I definitely recommend checking out this game. Now I don't own many, but I have a couple of digital games as well from the arcade and Radiant Silvergun for a while was only available here, it's not, not anymore, but I really love this game and just wanted to check out if it worked, and it does. Well, not my finest hour, but I guess you're wondering what about GTA 5? Does it work? Well, I put it in and it does recognise the disc and it tries to install but sadly, no. It's too damaged. Never mind, I'm pretty happy with what I got. So, there you have it. The end of another epic journey. At this point, I really should say that this entire journey has actually taken me a whole year to complete. Because when I started on this, I don't think I really had the skills to complete this. But as I went on and I persevered, I did get better and better. Now, you can see from the results that what I did wasn't really that pretty. I mean, it's not going to win any awards. But, you know, it was a mess to start with. And actually, I got it fairly clean, even though there were some ripped up pads and it works and that's the main thing so you know keep going and you'll get there in the end so now i can play my rare replay disc and i'm really happy it's just a shame that the xbox one didn't really have that many exclusives it had a couple but they've you know mainly been re-released on uh, the switch or the playstation at this point but i still got gears of war i can play or forza or even halo so it's not a complete waste of time. And actually, I think I'm mainly going to use it to play backwards compatible games from the 360 and the Xbox because there, there are quite a few. Well, let me know down in the comments if you've had a go at this and if you have any other tips and tricks or things to check out for. I could try and fix the other one, although I don't have any spares now having ripped off those parts. But let me know down in the comments what you think. And I'll see you next time on Kester's Forest. <laughs>